the Galil Ace 21N. I've, I've been familiar with the Galils. I've never actually shot one, never shot the original. I've never shot an Ace, but here I now have it in my hand for the very first time. And I gotta say, it's different. It's really different, especially coming from somebody who shoots a lot of ARs. Um, the first thing I do notice about it, visually, the thing that really stands out to me is this, this buttstock. I tend to like cheek risers because I tend to like to have a higher position on the gun. A lot of times I find myself doing a Hunchback of Northern Day because I'm trying to get so low on the gun. And I love the fact that it literally just naturally... Oh. See, and that's another thing too I gotta get used to. There are, there are things about this gun that are incredibly intuitive, but because I'm coming from the AR-15, I have to take a second to think, or at least a split second, to understand some of the distinctions. Like for instance, with the safety, the safety on this gun, um, on the right hand side, safe is back. And then we'll talk about that later, but then this is actually on. So safe, on, safe, on. So that's something I gotta get used to. Uh, but let me, I did it again. So let me drop it forward. This cheek weld is a lot, I love it, I love it. Now you can remove it and you can take it off, but for me it's something that I would keep on, especially when you're running a higher sight. And one thing I did notice is on these front sights, they're actually tritium. I don't know why a lot of us don't do that um, as far as the AR-15s are concerned. Just have tritium knights on our iron sights. I know they're backup sights, I know we probably won't use them as much and everybody's gone to the red dot, but I would love to have tritium night sights on my rifles the same way they tend to be with handguns. But nonetheless, this is the Galil Ace 21N with the reciprocating handle back here, which I tend to like reciprocating handles simply because it just kind of adds more drama to the gun. And that's largely my inner personal hype, tactical hype piece coming out. I just like guns to do things that Im improve on the experience. Um, especially once you've already demonstrated the gun is reliable and does what it does. I like guns to have a little more drama about them. So we're gonna go again. A couple things. I really like this trigger. Um, it's really smooth, it's really fluid, and it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't stack on itself, at least that I'm no, that I'm noticing. Um, the, the trigger comes back really smooth. I'd say it's about a six, six to five to six pound uh, trigger pull, and it, it's really easy to work. So, and then on top of that, you have the bolt catch here, which on paper, I think is, pretty damn smart. It kind of reminds me of the bad lever or kind of modified version of the bad lever. Uh, whereas bad lever was actually in the trigger guard and kind of crowded the space a little bit. On this, on this Galil, I kind of like this a little bit. It's kind of hard to actuate, maybe because my fingers are a little bit shorter, but for somebody with longer fingers, I think this is pretty much a godsend here. I'll show you right now. Let me drop that in here like that. Oh, let's see. Let's lock it back. So here, lock it back just like that. Drop it here, drop it forward. Um, I, I really like that feature and as far as you also have the magazine release here on this side and then you also have it on this side as well kind of drop it in that sense and then you also have this covering here for the reciprocating bolt handle which kind of locks the locks the gun into place to kind of deal with implement environments um, here these rail panels they actually come off as you can see here so if you wanted to run run your rail, so forth and so on. Personally, I like them, they're kind of comfortable. Um, they're a little beefy for my for my liking, but I guess that just comes with the comfort. But I really do, I, I, I like it, I like it. I like it a lot, um, especially now that it doesn't have the proprietary magazines that it did before. And you can pretty much run your P-Mags, the standard other mags that we have. Uh, let's see, let's do some more shoot. All right, so now what I want to do is this particular ace is a little special simply because it's not just semi, it's a full auto ace. And I'm 
never shot a full auto ace and I've never shot an ace period, a little ace period. So I'm gonna run a couple bursts through it real quick and just kind of get a feel for it. Uh, I'll probably dump it into one of these cars over here. Let me see. Let's do this. Uh, let's go over here. Let's go over here. Uh, another thing about this is this isn't this isn't stamped. It's milled. It's a milled receiver. And the beauty about that is the gun has a really robust feel to it. It feels like a very well put together gun. It doesn't feel like a gun they just kind of threw together in parts and just said, here, have at it. I, and that's one of the things that I do like about it because with a lot of guns that try to be different from the AR platform, and I'm not saying this gun was designed just to be different from the AR platform, but it is different. And I'm used to the AR considering my, my history with firearms coming up in the firearm industry. So for me, seeing different guns is a cool thing, but sometimes what I end up finding is Guns are just created to be different for the sake of being different. I feel like there was a lot of thought put into this gun in terms of, especially considering from it, considering its origins and where it came from. Um, some of the changes they've made to it as far as the, the magazine release, the fact that it now doesn't take proprietary magazines, um, the way they've dealt with this reciprocating bolt handle, this uh, reciprocating, reciprocating bolt, um, the safety lever, the cheek rise, all of those things, um, you can tell it was thought out. And then the fact that it is a milled receiver, it just adds to the experience of the gun from the standpoint that it feels like it's a high quality gun. Um, and by and large, it is. But not just to be different. Now what it does do is it does add some weight to it. There's some heft to it. Some people may like that, some people may not. Uh, quite frankly, right now, it's not really that intrusive because the gun is really well balanced. Sometimes when you get a lot of heft in the gun, you get it in the front part of it and it throws the balance of the gun off. Um, but this gun is incredibly balanced. So it doesn't, well, while you're shooting it, you don't notice the weight of the gun that much, but you do notice it to a degree, especially compared to say an AR. All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a short burst into these tires right here. <laughs> it's interesting, that is really interesting. With the short burst, the gun just it's, just, it's up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Sometimes what you tend to get with, with, with full automatic guns, fully automatic guns doing short bursts or fully auto, you kind, of, you kind of get this kind of circular pattern. With this, it's just and I, and I kind of like it because it's very predictable. Let me try, try my hand at it again. <laughs> oh, man. Let's see here. All right, let's go back to semi. All right, so I'm not familiar with this optic, to be honest with you. Um, I like it, but then I hate, I hate the reticle because this is Chevron. Chevrons do this weird tricks of vision with my eyes. So it makes it kind of hard for me to know where I want to hold, where my hold is. Um, but when I find it, it, it works. This gun is accurate. Um, I think anything missing wise is me and whatever issues I have with the reticle. So of course, I'm not going to get a fully automatic gun and not do a mag dump. It's kind of obligatory at this point. So I'm gonna go ahead, find somewhere where I can safely do a mag dump on this gun. I honestly don't wanna give it back. From what I heard, they do have pistol versions of this, along with the, uh, I think they come out with the pistol version with the SMB brace on them. But then they also have the SBR version for those of you who are brave enough to do the paperwork involved to get one of those. Um, I, I like this thing a lot. And I'm trying to figure out why, because I'm an AR guy, I've shot plenty of ARs, and for someone who shot as many ARs as I have, you would think I would be bored of them. And to a degree, it, it, it can get a little redundant. This, is, this feels really fresh. There's something about it that's really refreshing to shoot because even though it has the same feeling that I get from an AR to a degree, it still feels different enough that the experience is more enjoyable. Um, if I had to compare the first time I shot an AR to the first time shooting this, 
I, I dare say they're comparable with a slight edge to the AR-15, only because that was the first time I've ever shot a gun of that nature. So I kind of kind of knew what to expect coming into this, but there's an essence to this gun that I really enjoy and I really like. It's There's a cool factor to it as well um, that, it kind of, that, that kind of starts to wane when it comes to AR-15s just because you're so familiar with them. You know, familiarity breeds contempt. But with this, it's, it's just, it's different. Um, and, I, and sometimes I like different and sometimes I don't. And I don't feel like this gun is trying too hard. Like some guns tend to try too hard to be different for the sake of being different. But with that being said, let me shut up, run this mag. All right. Oh, another thing, full auto is in the middle. Um, I guess the way they see it, under stress, if I'm pulling this gun up, I'm gonna jam it all the way forward. And you rather err on the side of semi than full. So this is gonna to have to take a conscious effort to bring it into full auto, full auto with the Galil versus jamming it forward and throwing it into full auto. Instead, you're jamming it forward and throwing it in the semi. And then you could also do it on the other side. It's just a little more involved in doing so. This is kind of reminiscent of the, uh, the AK-47 safety lever. I've never been able to actuate any AK-47 safety lever with just my index finger. I've always had to take my hand off of the gun to do it on the side. This honestly is no different. But uh, with that being said, let's go. Let's mag dump this bad boy. So I want to get I want to get close enough to kind of demonstrate the controllability of this gun. Um, let's see. Like I said, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Like I'm so, I'm typically used to this kind of circular, the circular pattern that tends to be created whenever you're shooting a fully automatic rifle. <laughs> Not this gun. Um, it's, 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 it's kind of a very up and down, up and down, up and down, kind of a, a reticle pattern, at least from my, from my standpoint. So let's take a look at this. So, I'm gonna say, what are we about? 15 yards? 15. There's my group. And I, I think it was about 20, 25 rounds in that magazine. I'm not gonna argue with that. So, there you have it. Galil Ace, 21N. I definitely see one of these in my future. Well, not the full auto because, you know, laws and stuff. Right. Because laws, laws and, and stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have talked about I might be a little biased, but to me, a pew pew life is the ultimate lifestyle. Can you think of another lifestyle that protects your freedom, protects your life and the people that you love, puts food on the table, helps you bond with family and friends, and provide you sports and recreation? I can't. Can you? And now you can add hydration to that list with the new line of Pew Pew Life drinkware. The Pew Pew Life tumblers and bottles are made from stainless steel and feature a double wall vacuum insulation that keeps drinks cold for 24 hours and hot drinks hot for 12 hours. I think it's safe to say that there's no better way to stay hydrated while showing your pride for the lifestyle we all love and cherish. So click the link and order your drinkware today. And remember, the Pew Pew Life equals the people. What's going on folks, this is Coleon Noir. If you like what you saw in this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button that should be located on the bottom left portion of the screen. I mean, come on, who are you fooling? I know you want to.